I am Ramses the Great. No officer is with me, no charioteer, no soldier of the army, no shield-bearer. My army's divided. I stand alone beneath the walls of Kadesh, surrounded by Hittites. But I still have my chariot and the bravery of a god. I am Ramses the Great. <laughs> I am the Pharaoh Ramses, goodly of form like Atum, bringer of great victory over all foreign countries. One knows not when I will begin to fight. A strong wall about my army, their shield on the day of fighting, braver than hundreds of thousands combined. Going ahead and entering in among multitudes, powerful of heart in the hour of close combat, a thousand men are unable to stand firm before me. I advance bravely and return only when I have triumphed over my foe, as I do over the Hittites at the Battle of Kadesh. The Hittites under their foolish king Muatali have again raised their fists in defiance against the might of Egypt in taking the great trade city of Kadesh, an affront which cannot go unpunished. I set out at the head of my army, 20,000 men in four divisions, named for some of our most illustrious gods, Amun, Ra, Ptah, and Set. I lead the Amun division personally, and so eager am I to engage the enemy, I quickly outdistance the others and find myself alone. But Pharaoh is never alone, for the gods are always with him. In proof of this, my men apprehend two Bedouins, who tell me that the Hittites fear the strength of my wrath and have fled at word of my coming. But these Bedouin spies were sent by Muatali to deceive me. The Hittites are in truth close at hand and ready to strike. My scouts warn me at the last moment, lo, the king of Hatti has already arrived with many countries supporting him. They are armed with their infantry and their chariots. They have their weapons of war at the ready. They are more numerous than the grains of sand on the beach. Behold, they stand equipped and ready for battle, advancing from where they hid behind the old city of Kadesh. My other three divisions still far behind me, I stand alone against the enemy, with only the Amun division by my side. But no, not so, for the gods are always with Pharaoh. The enemy strikes, and we are surrounded thickly. They swarm like locusts shrieking, sweeping all around me. There I stand in the ruins of the camp, dead Egyptians all round me. Defeat seems certain. I call upon the great Amun to guide my arrows and lend strength to my arms. I gather my household troops and, with a few officers and followers, I mount my chariot and charge the eastern wing of the assembled foe with such ferocity that they give way. I am before them like the great god Set in his moment. Their massive chariots scatter before my horses, allowing my Egyptians to escape the net which Muatali has cast about us. The Hittites suffer the wrath of the Pharaoh, the power of our gods, and flee before the strength of my arm just as my other three divisions arrive. The dust finally settled. The Hittites still held Kadesh, but the bodies of their dead, strewn across the wreckage of the battlefield, attested to the price they paid for their defiance of Pharaoh. I viewed the field with satisfaction before sounding the call to move out. We returned to our own kingdom to celebrate the great victory. Kadesh may have remained Hittite that day, but their armies were crushed, and their pride along with it. The battle was ours. Muatali sued for peace, and we agreed to a grand treaty, the first one ever set down in writing in all the long history of the world. Peace indeed was maintained, and not only with the Hittites. Apart from some minor border skirmishes in Nubia, Libya, and Canaan, I never fought another war. Yet I reigned for another sixty years. I became Ramses the Builder, proclaiming my godhood throughout the kingdom, so that there would be no city, town, or village that did not know and honor my name, as I cared for my subjects as though they were my own children. Under my guidance, Egypt reached the pinnacle of her culture and power. Great temples at Karnak and the vast tombs of Thebes proclaimed my divinity. 
I dedicated countless statues and memorials to my one true love, my first queen Nefertari, who died far too young and never saw me at the height of my grandeur. She never saw our sons Ramses and Amun Hirwenemef grow into men and peacefully share the empire with Ka'em Waset, son of my second wife Iset Nefret. Nor could she take pride in Ka'em Waset's great work in preserving our past and rededicating the ancient temples. Over 200 wives and concubines birthed me 97 sons and 60 daughters. Egypt favored me with two Hebset festivals, each 30 years apart, the land and nation itself rejuvenating their beloved sovereign. No other pharaoh has ever lived long enough to have more than one. Now, I am 96 years old. I am so ancient that every living soul in Egypt only knows me as Pharaoh. They do not remember me as a tall warrior with red hair, mighty of arm, and with the features of an eagle. They only see an old man bowed by arthritis, suffering pain in noble silence. When I die, it is a calamity on par with the end of the world itself. But I am not truly dead. I am a god and a legend. Nine more pharaohs take the name Ramses and build even more tributes to my fame. I become synonymous with the name Pharaoh itself, even though I am not the Pharaoh of the Bible, as many believe, nor am I the cruel despot the Hittites would have you think through their inscriptions. I am Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. For I am the second Ramses, Uzerma Atra Setapenre, the Great.